Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Place of Binding Rise of We're at a minus one streak, but it's a deserved minus one streak. Keeper, the lost, right in a row. Now we get Kane. Is this a character? You're telling me there's characters in this game that can get hit twice and survive? What is this, easy mode? 2K, 4K, 1WL1. Really rolled off the tongue. 2K, 4K, 1WL1. I would like the queue for some Isaac fun. 1k, 3k, 1 dub, 4. That's one too few characters for a seed to be functional, and as a result, that uh, rhyme is nonsensical. There once was a 2k, 4k, 1w, L1, OK. We started as Kane, weren't feeling no pain, and then we got our streak looking shmo, shmo me. One of these days is gonna work, okay? The limerick is gonna come right off the top of the dome piece. That's the thing, man. We got all these freestyle rappers. You can't shake your stick outside without encountering a freestyle rapper in this day and age. I'm always, you know, riding the sky train in Vancouver, tripping over freestyle rappers all over the place. It's ridiculous. We don't have any freestyle limerick writers. And I really feel like that's a shame. For a lot of reasons. One big one is, think of all the great moments where you could go, OH! OH! I was just making sure. Is the music actually working here? It seems like the, the music is so consistent on my audio levels that it's, it's weird to me. Like, it's flat. But when I pause the music, it seemed to go away. So, alright. I mean, at this point, it's probably okay. Let's just live with it. Like, a freestyle rap, you have to build in those sort of, like, you know, diss moments where people go, Oh, oh, but in a limerick, they're set in stone for you already. You know, you just go, oh, when the punchline happens and you're set. So, Charm of the Vampire is what we got here. Um, it's okay. There was, you know, first off, on the, like, visual level, 10 out of 10. We get that nice Vegeta-esque Widow's Peak. We got some good stuff going for us in that category. Um, but if we could have maybe gotten it a little earlier and then gotten some value out of uh, that Demon Judgment, that might have been for the best, but it's not like it's a bad situation. I also bought a Spirit Heart, um, you know, just to more or less guarantee that we're going to keep ourselves alive during this boss fight. And then, you know, if we, if we don't get hit at all, we've got the Spirit Heart for the next floor and... You know, a better deal with the devil chance as a result of that. You know the deal at this point from an Isaac standpoint. You know, we're just trying to keep ourselves, uh, you know, on that Isaac flow chart. And we we deviate from the flow chart as is necessary, dynamically, depending on the items that we get on a run. There once was a boss named the Widow. It's as old as Max Von Sido. If you don't know that name... Please look up his fame. He was in Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, and also the seventh seal starring, well, directed by Ingmar Bergman. Look, I'm not saying I'm the limerick master, okay? I'm just saying, I'm, I'm trying here, okay? I'm trying. We got uh, Torn Photo. Torn Photo is actually extremely good did i actually just lose a whole spirit heart to wrath i'd like to write a, an incendiary protest limerick about that you know maybe that's why you can't take limericks seriously unfortunately it's not you know if you go to your girlfriend and you go oh my love i wrote you a sonnet she'd be like oh <laughs> Oh my god! But actually, you should probably be like, this guy's fucking weird, dude. It's not the 17th century. Like, could you just take me out for a mission-style burrito or something like that? But, um, let me put it this way. You probably got a better chance of getting a good reaction from that than if you go, mm, my darling, I've written you a limerick. She'd be like, what are you, you written me a limerick? Who are you, Jeff Ross? I don't understand. Andrew Dice Clay is no longer in vogue as comedians go. And it's a shame because, you know, there's no implicit reason why a limerick should be a less, uh, you know, like, a, a less legitimate form of poetry. Haikus follow a deliberate, not rhyming structure, but, uh, a deliberate, uh, 
you know, syllabic structure. And the, what's what's the uh, idea? Oh, I didn't mean to buy that actually. What's the idea that people have about haikus? Oh, contemplative, uh, zen-like, you know? What, what do people have about limericks? At the end, you just rhyme it with fuck it. You know, words that rhyme with Nantucket, basically. And that's because we've misused the, the limerick. We need to bring limericks back from the brink, you know? I need some transcendental limericks. To reestablish this as an art form that actually, you know, has legitimacy. It's probably not gonna happen, though. There once was a man from Vancouver. He didn't work as a mover. He drank from water fountains, got a view of the mountains, and said, Hope I don't meet a cougar. If it's too Farley Moet esque, that's a very Canadian reference. It's okay. My manager's always telling me, "Stop making the Canadian references. Stop making. The you gotta make your content more accessible for a wider audience." So I was chilling in Shanghai yesterday. What's the deal with street? Vendors. Okay, here we go. This is really good. We should definitely take uh, Guppy's collar. And if we take nine lives and we step on the spikes and it kills us, it doesn't really matter because we would have at least gotten nine lives first. Okay, I mean, this is beautiful. We have uh, two Guppy items and a really good chance to become Guppy, obviously. Um, all we need for that is a third one, which could happen from a curse room or, you know, any variety of different areas here. We're not in a bad position from a DPS standpoint, but uh, certainly that's kind of like the most glaring area. As long as our defense is relatively handled here, the, the most glaring uh, problem with this run is definitely uh, DPS. But assuming we can, uh, you know, finagle our way out of that on this floor, we should be good to go. I mean, all we need is a, a, a curse room that actually pays out properly. You know, or it pays out the way we want it to pay out. Properly might be a little bit of a, a value judgment on my part. I don't want to make you feel like if you only pay out with two spirit arts, that's improper. Um, there goes our deal with the devil chance. Well, to be real with you, we only had a very small deal with the devil chance regardless, but still. We are pseudo on pace for boss rush, but uh, that, that can change pretty quickly. You know, the caves floors are the ones that I think I, I need to start uh, allowing more time for if we're going to have a great chance to uh, make that happen. But again, boss rush, not always essential. Sometimes nice, sometimes uh, nearly compulsory in my opinion, sometimes just a, uh, a pipe dream. Okay, well at least we're getting a lot of bombs. Our... Uh, our Item rooms predominantly have been pretty bad for us. I mean, Charm of the Vampire is okay, although we've covered up our sweet, you know, Joe Flaherty-esque Widow's Peak. Um, all we have gotten from them is, uh, is Charm of the Vampire, I think. The other two have been active items, if I remember correctly. Or, wait, no, I was gonna say, do we get Luckfoot from, from one? But I forgot, we're playing as Kane. It's just, that's what happens when you play as the Lost and the Keeper for too long. You start to... Forget what other characters actually look like. It's like some Marty McFly shit. They're disappearing from the Polaroid. Um, don't ever speak to me about what just happened right there, okay? I just did that to proc Nun's habit, and as a result, get a payout from Book of Sin, and then Book of Sin gave me a demon heart, which gives me a chance to get a deal with the devil here, and by chance, I mean 100% guarantee. And I guarantee that that will give us a guppy item as well. There can be no question about it. Now, obviously, that was terrible damage. The Now, the, the good news is, the odds of us actually, uh... Can, can I just, like, kick a bomb in here and kill the... nub? Because the nub is pissing me off, dude. I can't plan for it. Um... The, the thing that I would like to point out here is, as bad as that awful damage was, uh, on the bright side, there aren't too many situations in which, you know, one life makes the difference on nine lives. I'm not going to say it's never happened to me. There have been situations where one life could have made the difference. But it's not the most common uh, way for things to go, for sure. Usually, you know, you'll win with probably like 80% of the time. 
you win without ever losing a life, and then the rest of the time, you know, you got like between two and seven left or something like that. Because, um, you know, if you lose one, the more likely you probably are to be in a position to lose more, but... We're going to continue to explore for at least a little while on this floor. Uh, Blood Clot is a damage upgrade, and, and the range is actually nice. As you saw in that like big room with the, uh, the Diglets, I was having some problems there. Uh, hitting enemies from afar, whether by shot speed or by range. But uh, I I'm not going to be offended by the fact that that's going to be our item of choice there. But Blood Clot is not really enough of a DPS improvement to be stoked about. It's just sort of, It's just sort of there. We do have the uh, the engine for greater uh, growth here going. We've got keys. It's a very roundabout way to say that we're in a pretty good standpoint from a key situation. Pretty good situation from a key standpoint. Our secret room indeed exists here and actually makes for, uh, in all likelihood, a really good shop. we got 20 cents. No bombs. But I've been, you know, kind of... Guaranteeing myself that legacy because I've been using bombs to actually deal damage because our DPS has left a little bit to be desired There we go, okay, this room sucks. Don't beat yourself up if you take a hit on this room Even the The Isaac pros take a hit on this room Ooh. I pulled in the catacombs was a feeling about one ninth dead just looking for red candles so I could lay my head. I said, hey, Edmund. What are my odds of turning red? He just took off his hat and said, imagine that. Me working for you. Oh, sign, sign everywhere. <laughs> No one is going to like that joke as much as I liked making it, but that's okay. You know, you got to amuse yourself. That's important. Anything in here worth... Yeah, I mean, we're one red chest in theory away from getting an easy win, so we have to open them. Instead, we got pills, and Kane, not guaranteed great pills, but hey, health up. One makes you small. So far, so good. I'd say we're, we're basically two for two. I'll take this one yet. Speed down. Unfortunate, but probably okay. Power pill. Totally fine. And we even got another demon heart for succeeding there. Alright, let's head downwards. Way slower than boss rush now. But feeling pretty good. And actually, uh, more options is a great item. We're going to get uh, at least two more... No, at least three more opportunities for that to... Uh, Actually pay out with something. I always... Uh, my math gets confused because I'm like, we don't get item rooms on the womb. Like, for, for theirs options, you don't get an extra option on the womb 2 or Necropolis 2 or the Depths 2, for example. But with more options, you get them up to the womb 1, but not past... Or you get them up to Necropolis 2, but not past that, I should say. I don't know. My brain is... Half broken here. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Seven cents, despite spending 15 on the last floor, is pretty good. You might as well use that. We got another key out of it. Uh, HP would be really nice. I would be all over that. We're certainly not in a position to lose uh, much HP on this floor. You know, we're, we're probably roughly as good as the uh, enemies that we're facing, which is great. And we've got more potential for the future, you know. Being one guppy item away from becoming guppy, having more options, so there's a, less of a chance of us being saddled with just, like, one completely shitty item room item. These are all, um, you know, things that give us a little bit of hope for the future. If we were in this situation, but, you know, we, we had zero guppy items and... You know, maybe no deal with the devil precedent or something like that, and we didn't take those pills, then we'd probably be looking at this situation through a, a different lens right now, and we would be, uh, we'd be honestly quite worried, but... That's not to say we can't be screwed on this run. That can definitely still happen, but, uh... You know, we've, we've actually got a, a pretty good line for improving ourselves on this run. And I mean, we're Kane. So it's not like it's going to be the most amazing thing of all time if we succeed on this run. It's not keeper or loss level, for sure. But uh, 
It's nice either way. That was really bad on my part. And at some point, you know, I can keep saying, like, you know, it doesn't matter if we take this damage, but it sort of does in aggregate. Little Chad is okay. Non Krampus. Okay, so instead we get Abaddon. Still a lovely item. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Uh, but. Oh, and Bloody Lust as well. Um, well, there's nothing really negative to say about it. Except for the fact that, you know, Little Chad and Charm of the Vampire are a lot less likely to be useful now. But Little Chad at its best. Well, first off, to be at its best, it requires Dark Bomb. But Little Chad at its best. It with Dark Bomb is not as good as Abaddon, especially when we have a serious, you know, dearth of damage right now. So, this is a really nice pickup for us that uh, probably guarantees us a great shot at victory. Now, does it swing us enough to give us uh, a good beat on boss rush immediately? No, it doesn't give us a beat on boss rush, but that has given me the great idea uh, for at least a name for my C-SPAN show, where I play the Binding of Isaac for an audience of dozens. Well, lots of red hearts. Uh, we just want to go to our item room and get out of this floor. Uh, like, the shop is secondary. Oh, with the double key room? I'm a little bit more interested now to see what we got going on here. Okay, actually, now I do want to go to the shop. Two keys for a dime uh, is roughly market value. You know, five cents per key. But then on top of that, we had a lot less money and a lot more keys. So I'm actually uh, pretty pleased with the way that... That went down. In some situations, that would be uh, terrible, but you know that's that's kind of what makes Isaac such an interesting game. I probably should be thanking my lucky stars I didn't get hit there. Man, Kane, he's so lucky. I know, I gotta do it. He's so lucky. He's a star, but he cries, cries, cries for his lonely heart thinking. Oh, there we go. Guppy Dream. All right. Guppy Dream plus victory equals happy me. Uh, I think I'm just going to... I know that that's a teleport card, and we probably have, like, better uh, reason to save that for boss rush, but I also feel like not doing that room is going to save me, like, 45 seconds, which might give me a better chance of at least getting into boss rush, uh on time especially now that we're guppy and you know we didn't have great options in our item room but skinny odd mushroom is pretty good so let's go down to the next floor a full floor behind schedule but not without the prospects of pulling it back i think um one second i gotta check this for a second no these messages are not as important as i thought they were i thought maybe they were urgent nlss related messages but they are not I don't think I'm ever involved in urgent communication. That's probably a misrepresentation, but you know, time sensitive at least. I don't know if we made keys there. I think we made keys, but uh, we got some luck upgrades. And even though it took a, a little extra time and probably lowered our boss rush chances, I think in the end that that's, uh, that's fine. The luck upgrades can make up uh, for uh, an item related issue. You know, if we have too few items, luck upgrades on the chest can definitely uh, change that. So we are um, working on our fly economy as well. If we can keep that fly economy strong, we can conceivably really start to get good pace here. Now, if we lose all of our flies hitting the invulnerable side of one of these jokers, then we're going to be in a terrible spot. Or at least a, a diminished percentage chance, but... You know, I, I feel like that's probably not the most engaging form of my commentary is me giving you the the play-by-play -play 538 style of how Nate Silver feels about my chances of getting to boss rush. Maybe not as compelling as I think it is from the standpoint of being like a very casual armchair statistics nerd. Um, this feels like a secret room and we're killing time here anyway. Okay, it was not. And that is not a teleport card. But it is a card that makes it conceivable to go to Boss Rush and have a good time on Boss Rush. Now, I, I will say that, you know, I, I call a spade a spade. And in a lot of situations where I play poorly, I'm not ashamed to call it out. I think I've been... This is a close one. Mom's Contacts is a little better, I think. Um, I've been playing, I think, relatively badly here. Um, and it would it would behoove me. If I may pretend to know what that word means. It would behoove me to play a little bit better. 
We're probably not in a risky situation, but you never want to start a streak with, like, a win you shouldn't have gotten because you played badly but got good items. You know, it just doesn't feel right. We'll take Mom's Key. We'll check this. It's another Chariot card. We're gonna have, assuming the boss room is here, which it is, we're gonna have, like, a minute to get into the Mom fight, which is gonna be real close. But... Let's see what we get here. I was thinking maybe like we had a chance for it to be Krampus and that could be annoying. I'll take Kim being Conception. You know it synergizes well with Bloody Lust if we could ever get both of them to work in conjunction with Red Hearts that we you know don't even have right now. Um, I mean in theory we could actually play the Blood Bank and possibly make it worth our time and end our HP to do so. As ridiculous as that sounds, even if it kills us, if it gave us um, if it gave us you know Little Brim or something like that, it could be worth it. But Probably not right now, it's fair to say. Okay, single stone chest, definitely not worth it. Either way, uh, we wanted to give up something. Or we wanted to get something from the deal with the devil because it gave us a, uh, a chance of permanent polar invincibility regardless. Uh, yeah, we'll check it. We probably got, you know, maybe 40 seconds to get into our mom fight if we still want to do boss rush, which we do. And there it is right there. Um... I would like to, if possible, still go to the uh, item room. So let's see if we can get, you know, a card or something here. I don't really want Maggie's Faith, honestly. I'm, I'm really happy where I am from an HP standpoint. Uh, and especially with the type of HP that we have. So, all right. Well, we have to make a decision. And I, I think the decision is that we're probably going to go do Boss Rush. Even though we have... Uh, even though we have more options. As much as this might seem like a kind of a, a bad move, I think it makes a lot of sense because we get the, our choice of four items instead of our choice of two items. That's a good mod for Afterbirth Plus. Um, more options making it so that... Uh, nah, I don't think we really need that. More options making it so that you... Uh, ooh. <laughs> Most interesting item is the Parasite here, I think. More options making it so you got eight choices of items from, uh, from Boss Rush instead of just four. Just throwing it out there. You know, I'm not saying from a balance standpoint it, it really makes any sense at all, but... Actually, from even like a flavor standpoint, it doesn't really make sense. Because it really should be uh, theirs options, considering you're fighting bosses instead of, you know, getting item rooms. But either way, I think, you know, Pyromaniac is... A, it, it's a better item when you've got red hearts. Let's just leave it at that. Um, immunity to bombs is not as interesting as, as spawning a... A lot more shots every time a shot lands, especially considering, you know, we've got stuff like, uh, you know, Mom's Contact in particular working from a, a tier effect standpoint and doing a lot of extra work on these enemies. Now, don't get too attached to this level of damage because this is, uh, you know, the Devil card working its magic for us, but... It's amazing how quickly, like, three floors ago, we were like, this run is not strong enough from a DPS standpoint. And now I'm like, dude, we're actually, like, completely shredding the bosses on Boss Rush. Now, if we could just get not Fear Shot and instead exclusively Mom's Contact, that would be uh, an improvement for us as well. Thanks a lot, Abaddon! No, I'm not, uh... I'm not complaining about Abaddon. That's old Northern Lion, complains about good items, because they're not the good items he wanted specifically. Oh, we also get slowed shot, or uh, slowing shots, thanks to uh, Little Gish, I forgot, so... Mom's Contact actually doesn't have as much of an opportunity to pop off as I thought it would, but... I guess if, if we can hit with our, uh, with our tier before Little Gish hits, then it's actually like a, uh, you know, a 50% chance to get the tier effect we actually want the most. This is one of the faster uh, boss rushes we've had recently. Not all time, but but recently, and that's a that's a big step up from where we were uh, earlier on this run. Sissy long legs is totally fine. We're gonna head down to the next floor, and honestly, not really hush caliber in my opinion right now. But uh, in theory, there's uh, there's all sorts of upward momentum that we could have here. It's just nice to have a run where uh, I'm no longer concerned about you know. The fact that it takes me 10 hits to kill an enemy. I'm also no longer concerned about the fact that no matter how strong the run gets, we can only get hit twice without dying, like I was on uh, 
you know, our last two runs. Although I will admit, you know, I am a little... Salty's not the right word, because I'm, I'm not actually upset about it. But we could have won the... We could have won the keeper run, and we could have won the lost run if we lost the keeper run, which we obviously did. But, um, you know, it happens. Moment of weakness. I, I find it hard to, to characterize a loss as the keeper or as the lost as a, uh, a slump. Just a disappointment because we probably should have done it. But, it's you know, it's not like the Golden State Warriors losing to the Washington Wizards. It's like the Golden State Warriors losing to... You know, maybe Oklahoma City Thunder. You're like, you know, on paper they were favorites, but on any given Tuesday, anything can happen. I actually recorded that episode on a Monday. There's no way for you to have known that. You can see him on YouTube any given Sunday. Won the Super Bowl. Drove off in a Hyundai. Which, honestly, like... I get that a lot of hip-hop is about, you know, well, not a lot of hip-hop necessarily, but certainly some of hip-hop is, you know, glorifying status symbols. What's wrong with a Hyundai, dude? It's a uh, nice, reliable automobile. Now, I don't drive a Hyundai. Um, I drive a Ford Focus, of course, as we've talked about on the regular. How am I, uh, how happy am I with it? Uh, it's got a 1.0 liter engine. Doesn't that speak for itself? Only takes 20 or 30 seconds to get up to highway speeds. Um, no, but in all honesty, it's like, Kanye, why do you gotta throw Hyundai under the bus, dude? I know what you're thinking. Some of you out there are probably like, well, he won the Super Bowl. He's an NFL player. He really should be driving a luxury automobile. Why? Just because he's an NFL player, he's gotta, you know, have a Range Rover, a Mercedes or something like that? You know, saving 80 grand is still saving 80 grand. I'm not saying everybody should drive a Hyundai. I'm just saying you shouldn't be shaming people for doing so. People are going to think he he won the Super Bowl. People are going to think less of him because he drives a freaking, you know, budget price sedan. That's just being financially savvy as far as I'm concerned. If I saw, you know, an NFL player and he was, he was driving a Hyundai, I would be like, this guy values, uh, you know, being financially conservative with his money. As a result, probably really unlikely to be kind of in that Vince Young boat where we find out after he retired that he's gone bankrupt because he was spending 50k a week at the fucking Cheesecake Factory. Excuse me for not, you know, glorifying ridiculous, ridiculous excesses of wealth just because you got it. If I wrote that rap song, it would be much different, you know? You can see him on TV any given Sunday, won the Super Bowl, drove off in a Hyundai... That right there could drive a sane man berserk. No, but see, I'd be like, you know, look at him. Isn't he a good example? He put his money in a, in a sensible fiscal. <laughs> He's got it invested in index funds, tracking the performance of the S&P 500. Yeah, yeah, he might experience dips, but... On a long enough time scale, his average annual returns l look roughly equal to 7%. You know? Over a long enough time scale, that can turn his money into more money. And that's why he... Okay, this is just getting annoying, but seriously. The bit was far too played out, and I apologize for that. But, I don't agree with... Uh, with automobile shaming a Super Bowl victor just because he's driving a Hyundai. You you spend your your money willy-nilly, you know. I'll save it, retire from the NFL at the age of 25 before risking debilitating long-term injury and then just, you know, coast on the earnings. The chariot versus power pill. Basically the same functionality here. I mean, what are we even doing on this run? To be honest with you, if we're not going to fight Hush, which I'm probably not, um, we're pretty much just riding this one out to the end, you know? I'm with you to the end of the line, buck. All we got to do is uh, not take as much damage as we gain in HP. I don't know how much we're going to gain in HP, to be fair, uh, but we're not losing very much either. So, well, this could change. 
Because we are going to take Incubus, and then we should take uh, Death's Touch along with it, because they're both awesome for us. It does make the Parasite even better as well, so I'm feeling, like, super vindicated for not taking Pyromaniac, even though Pyromaniac is, uh, is rarer. I, I could not see... We had so many... So much shit flying by the screen, I could not even see the spike traps. Luckily, I did not get hit by them either. Alright. We're doing a ton of damage. We're actually, like, we're at a ridiculous pace right now. Please. Please. There we go. Okay. Well, we've already seen our deal with the devil, so we're pretty much just moving on. Uh, honestly, on the chest, doesn't really matter. Obviously, something like sad bombs would be dope, but I, I wouldn't mind just getting, like, a form of mapping as well, because... We already know that unless we get a reroll room, this is going to be the easiest win that we've had uh, in recent memory, so... I wouldn't mind just uh, expediting the process slightly here. Thank you, Mom's Key. I mean, we're at the point where, you know, I, I wish that there was a donation machine for keys and bombs that you could just, like, pay extra versions of those consumables into for future runs. You know, just to smooth out the, uh, the variance ever so slightly, but... You know, this would be a great opportunity to take advantage of that. Put 28 keys in the key donation machine. You know, not have to worry about not being able to access a, f a second floor item room again for the next month. I'm actually, as much as that sounds like a novel idea... Ooh, Fate's Reward. Not really worth too much, but... The better your tiers are, the better Fate's Reward is. Of course, the better your tiers are, the less valuable Fate's Reward is regardless because of the fact that you don't need it as much, but... Still, it's nice. You know, even if you're a millionaire, thousand dollars is still a thousand dollars, right? All right, let's check up this way. As much as that sounds like a, a novel idea, the idea of a key and bomb donation machine, I think it actually that borders on making Isaac a little too smooth. You know, you're basically eliminating the variance in consumable gain there. If you could have 999 keys or bombs available to you. Well, I guess the bomb doesn't even make sense, because how are you going to bomb a bomb donation machine to get bombs? I guess if you placed one bomb, you could get, like, one to three bombs back, but either way. Um, it just, I think it makes it almost a little bit too easy. You rely on not having keys to, to, to make some runs that probably would be powerful, less powerful to make it more interesting, I guess, but... All right. If there's ever a time for this run to fail, it's actually going to be now, because we're low on HP, we're going to be taking double damage, and there's going to be some tricky rooms. Ah, and Curse of the Blind could give us something horrible. Uh, Infestation 2 is amazing. Holy Mantle is amazing. Less than 3 is actually pretty bad for us here, but still. And Undefined is is just not worth anything. It does, doesn't factor in positively or negatively. Um, but, yeah, Infestation 2 is doubtlessly one of the best items in the game. So, and and so is Holy Mantle for that matter. So pretty much uh, we're we're safe here, like a hundred percent set in stone safe. I'm talking about like you know the Big Bang Theory being renewed for a 900th season on CBS safe. Cancel dang old Hannibal and his freaking second season. Magnum Opus, Mads Mikkelsen, and they freaking. Big Bang theories on the air until the heat death of the universe. I swear to God, man, it's the dang Philistines running the, the inmates are running the asylum at this point. I don't care about the Eternal Heart. Is it the right concept to go back and get the Eternal Heart? It really doesn't matter at this point. You know, we're about to be sent above in the Rapture. Crystal Ball. That's mapping. Uh, and you're like, oh, well, should I take my good shoes? It doesn't matter. You're going to the promised land, dude. It doesn't matter if you got your your Yeezys or you're wearing some new balances, okay? You're gonna be fine. The Empress. Better than two of hearts, which actually can't do anything for us here. And I gotta say, this was just like a nice, casual, like, it's it's certainly an above average run, no doubt about that. And don't take that as me about to give the game like a backhanded compliment, like, like thanks for nothing. Um, no, but like, it's an above average run, you know, we finished it in a timely fashion. 
We had some moments where we were low on HP and things were maybe a little bit in question, but not much, and we got some really good items. Some items that were really fun and we felt powerful. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the run. If you did, click the like button, helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.